Forest. If you don't know where it is, about 30 miles from Inverness uh, along the Moray Firth coastline. Um, I identify so much with the previous speakers, uh, all the heartache and everything you've gone through, we've gone through it, and I'm going to talk a bit about learning from experience and doing a community asset transfer. But in the my cat's blacker than your cat, the wolf of Badnock came to Forrest first. <laughs> he practiced on Forrest before he raised Elgin. <coughs> so, sorry about that. Um, now, we've got a, a little film coming up, two minutes, uh, and it's rather nice to hear Sally Magnuson's tones than mine. Uh, Going to explain a bit of the background, and this was a submission for the <coughs> Scottish Heritage Angels. In 2010, a public meeting was organised to gauge the community's views on having the town's tower and the toll booth restored and reopened for use by local people. The Forest Trust was formed and it organised a working party for the tower and one for the toll booth. Nelson Tower, standing as it does in an elevated position overlooking forests, is once again a place worth visiting. The toll booth group set about transforming a neglected and rundown building into a very usable community asset that it is today. The Forest Heritage Trust was formed after a, a well attended public meeting to address the potential closure of the toll booth building in the middle of the town. So, more than 100 people attended to argue for it to be retained and upgraded. At the same time, the Nelson's Tower building was also not being fully utilised. So both buildings are now in the hands of the local people in the form of a community asset transfer from the council to the community group, the Forest Heritage Trust. Well, people felt a pride and wanted the, the building in the middle of the town as being the old um, home of the, the old borough of Forest. So it needed to be preserved. So that shows in the volunteer group that has eventually taken over this responsibility on behalf of the town. The connections are being made with different groups and different ages all the time. So that's what makes me so proud of being part of the Forest Heritage Trust. It has brought new life to the heart of Forest when the two buildings were being unloved and uncared for, which was really sad to look at. So I'm really pleased that this project has taken root and look forward to the developments that the Forest Heritage Trust are making to the future. And again, Braggy writes, because we won that award, I get to show that film. Now, I'm just gonna recap a few things that weren't quite, oh, okay. There. So there's been a toll booth in Forest since 1150. The current building's about 180 years old. And it's got many uses. Uh, as you saw, it's a courtroom, it's got prison cells, a police station, long-term prison cells, it's been a rent office, it's been everything. So it's got a lot of history, a lot of heritage. It's grade A listed. Town centre location, and the council used it as offices until 2010, and they left behind them thousands of archive boxes. So the building was going to be boarded up and placed on minimum care and maintenance. So it was an ideal candidate for a community asset transfer. And we did one. And I'm actually only 45. It doesn't look like it, but it <laughs> took years off me. So, I'm going to do learning from experience, it's called project managers, love these acronyms and abbreviations, but I'm going to do it in G time. Right, a SPOC, insist on a SPOC, a single point of contact with your council. Council will often ask for you, for your organisation, to come up with one as well. And this is somebody who's empowered and authorised to speak on behalf of your trustees. Develop a working relationship with your SPOC. Ours changed twice, then was gapped. We had an email drop box that never got answered, and it changed again. That cost us a year. Now, 
To be fair, the council were going through major budget changes and uh, designing new business procedures for themselves, etc. So we can understand that, but it does take time, so be aware of that. Win over your local elected councillors. There was Lorna Creswell in the film there. She's one of our councillors. Uh, we kept them up to speed all the time with what we wanted to do and don't tell them any lies. Tell them the truth because you want them to go and nudge people for you. Um, and that one, we thought about going to our MSP uh, and then we decided no because it is like waking the sleeping dragon. Apologies to any politicians in the room, but they can hijack your cause. So, timelines, they always extend. It's the law of project management, you know that. There's no, nothing like a shortcut. So we try using the three-point estimate, which is managing expectations. You do the best case, most likely, and the worst case. So if it takes you an hour every day to commute to work, that's the most likely. If you can do it in half an hour, that's your best case. And if it takes you an hour and a half because there's traffic, that's your worst case. That's an example of a three-point estimate. Optimism bias, that's a lovely word, that one. Uh, a lot of procurement people use this. Um, we got uh, two very good project managers and we had some problems, there were some hold-ups, some hurdles. They got us around them and we kind of got into groupthink. And we sort of thought, yes, yes, this project is now valid. It's going to go ahead, it's going to... Uh, no, no, we got ourselves into thinking we were going to get it completed in next to no time. It doesn't work like that. Life is not like that. The toll booth is common good, and that incurs additional conditions. And the council were worried that they may be challenged by somebody before they handed over the building to us. Somebody might come along and say, that's common good, you can't give that away. So there was an extra hurdle we had to overcome there, so it costs more time. And dogma, uh, you may encounter this, I did, and I can speak, I have been a civil servant, so I know what dogma is. I wrote the business case, I, put in there references to documents that the council had previously seen, the, uh, our options appraisals and all these good things. And uh, it was all referenced out. And then they came back and said, um, your business case, uh, it's not of detail. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, what are you going to do with the building? I said, well, it says in the options appraisal that we've referenced, we're going to do this, this, and this. We're not going to do that. We're going to do this. Oh, but we want it in one document. Okay. Uh, Christmas was wiped off, I spent a month, I cut and pasted all the references into the business case, tripled the size of it, and boy was there a thud factor when it hit the table. So yes, that's dogma. Skills. I've heard people say they've borrowed lots of people, there are lots of people out there with lots of skills, and some will even do it pro bono for you. And Again, Forrest is very lucky, uh, had lots of volunteers. We've, uh, we don't even pay, I should admit this, we don't even pay our accountant. Uh, he does it pro bono. It's just amazing. Somebody somewhere has done it before. Uh, go searching on the internet, you'll be surprised. If you need help with something, try just typing it in and having a look. You'd be surprised. Uh, Plagiarised previous applications. Well, this was the first community asset transfer that Murray Council had ever done. So they didn't have previous examples. So I said, well, what's your marking scheme? So I got the marking scheme, saw where things were heavily weighted, lightly weighted, and biased the business case that way. Um, that's all I could think of. Now they've done quite a few asset transfers and they send out people uh, model examples. You must, this is it. So obvious, but it's the hardest thing to try and measure is community support. The council kept asking us, community support, what have you got, what have you got? So we showed them photographs of meetings, etc. etc. Uh, but keep a record of all of this because it is really, really useful stuff. And also, if you've got visitors, uh, where have they come from? Because this is now being asked, you know, are you from Australia, from the continent, where are you, America, whatever. All useful stuff. So when you keep a record of um, visits, etc. Ah, oh, Oscar. Oscar. Yes, we had a slight accident. One of our chaps was ill, didn't file an Oscar return in time, and the first thing the financial lady said when she assessed the business case was, you haven't, got a, you haven't filed a return for Oscar. So we had to go and sort it out. So just make sure your business is in order before you put the business case in. Um, Oscar returns are very important. Uh, 
Five year plan. If you're asked to produce one plan, you should, really. We just come to the end of our first five year plan. We're having another planning day in a couple of weeks' time. Um, this is obvious stuff, but contingency. If you do not have a regular source of income uh, and uh, you need to keep some money in the bank to be able to pay the regular outgoings, your electricity, etc., you need to have succession wind up plans. Uh, pretty obvious stuff, but just to show that you've thought about it. So in your business case, they they know that we thought about it. And a ROP, this is another a lovely acronym, Risk and Opportunities Management Plan. And oh, yeah, everybody does risk assessments these days. Yes, uh, a necessary evil, you must you must do them, you do your mitigation, all the good things uh, that you learn about, some fantastic skills you can pick up. Um, and the one thing we didn't know, as a charity, we were entitled to all these um, discounts and handbacks and uh, it was an 80% mandatory discount on your rates, 20% discretionary. Uh, so I wrote a cheeky letter and I got 20% discretionary, so it's worth working. Worth. That's it. If in doubt about anything at any time, play the daft laddie or lassie routine. It worked for me. Thank you. Thank you.